Hey y'all, Coach in a Fight here with a serious message for those who are feeling the calling of the 144,000. Now, you may have seen one of these popular videos about the 144,000 on our channel. We have been teaching about that group since 2018. If you haven't seen these videos, I'll give you a link at the end of this one so that you can check those out. But in this video, we want to talk about how many of the 144,000 are about to get their sealing. That seal that we hear about over in Revelation chapter 7. So if you feel like you may be one of the 144,000, you want to pay particularly close to this video and the scriptural information that I'm about to present or you may miss that sailing opportunity. So let's get started. The first thing I want to do is bring you back over to chapter 39 out of the Third Testament of the Bible as we briefly talk about who the 144,000 are. We see in verse 40 out of chapter 39 how our Father will be using this 144,000 for a great mission. And this great mission is to save humanity from extinction. See, this tribulation or this apocalypse that we are facing threatens to annihilate all life from our planet. But our Heavenly Father intends for humanity to go on. So he has set aside 144,000 individuals, equipping them with the tools that they need, not only to survive the tribulation, but to help a multitude that no man can number to survive as well. Those individuals that will go on to inherit the earth. Now, you hear a lot of people talk about being 144,000. Many people will stand up and say they are 144,000, even though the selection process hasn't started yet. Nobody will know for sure that they are 144,000 until they receive that seal that we hear about in Revelation 7. But like we see in verse 44, there are many who take on the name of the 144,000 for vanity's sake or for a desire to feel secure. There are some religions that teach that the 144,000 are the only ones that survived the tribulation. So since many people are afraid of death, they take on the name of the 144,000, thinking that by doing so, they will increase their chances of being saved. And there are others who take on the name, like we said, for vanity's sake, with no intention on completing that mission that we hear about or doing the work that the 144,000 are called to do in this tribulous time. We see in verse 46 that the 144,000 are channels in which our Father uses to communicate with humanity from the spirit world. These guys are messengers or envoys. They are our father's instruments that he will use, like we said, to save humanity. We see in verse 55 that their destiny is to throw light on the path of their brothers. In other words, to teach the rest of us what we need to know in order to survive the tribulation. We learn in 57 that these guys are like lifeboats. They are guardians and counselors and strongholds equipped with the tools and weapons in order to fulfill this divine mission. Sure, the rest of us will have this opportunity to get these tools and weapons, but we see in verse 59 that our Father intends to start with this 144,000. Like the parable which says that the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which is hid in three measures of meal till the whole lump is leavened. Our Father has put a lot of time and effort into training these individuals like soldiers. And we see in 55, like we'll see in Revelation chapter 7, once these guys are sealed, then many of the end times events will start to take place. Matter of fact, let me read verse 7. It says, when those chosen by me find themselves reunited round my law, the earth and the stars will be shaken, and in the sky there will be signs. Now, doesn't that sound like the great day of the Lord that we read about over in Revelation chapter 6? Well, this is what Revelation chapter 7 and verse 3 is talking about when it says, Hurt not the earth, nor the seed, nor the tree, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. 
So now, do you see a connection here? Both of these passages are talking about catastrophic events that will devastate the earth. And both are also talking about the 144,000 being prepared before this devastation starts. Notice that in chapter 7, it says that this 144,000 have to be sealed in their foreheads. While back in the Third Testament, it says that they have to be reunited round my law. This should all remind you of Matthew chapter 25 and the ten virgins that were waiting for the bridegroom to return. Five of them had oil and the other five didn't. Well, in this video, we're going to talk about what that oil is so that you could be ready like you read about over there in Second Peter in chapter 1 when it's talking about the calling of the 144,000. There are a lot of people that are feeling that calling, maybe even millions that feel the call of the mission of the 144,000, but only few will be chosen. So like Peter is telling us, we have to make that calling and election sure, meaning we have to do what we have to do in order to be sure that we get that sailing that John was talking about in chapter 7. So let's come back over to the book of Revelation and let me show you a common thread related to the 144,000. You see further down in Revelation chapter 7 in verse 14 it's saying that they are those who came out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. And we're in Revelation chapter 12 it says and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. And in Romans chapter 5 and verse 9, we see that it is by this blood that we are saved from the wrath of God. So the question is, what is the relationship between the blood of the Messiah and the sealing of the 144,000? Now, there are a lot of people who are not candidates for the 144,000 that will try to tell you that simply by the Messiah dying on the cross his blood was shed and we now have the forgiveness of our sins and we don't have to worry about the law and we all have eternal life which to them means that there's nothing that we have to do in order to receive eternal life or salvation but when they say that I always think of the evil people of the world and I think so if there's nothing we have to do to be protected by his blood then his protections must cover everybody on the planet including people like Joseph Stalin or Kim Jong Il or Mao Zedong or even Hitler and when I bring it up then they start trying to add caveats to it saying well you must believe in Christ in order to be redeemed by his blood well to that I say Hitler was a Christian too when you look at his book Mein Kampf you see that he wrote about our father all throughout that book even going as far as to say that Jesus Christ was his Lord and Savior in fact a lot of what he did he did in the name of God he thought that by exterminating the Jews he was doing God's work and he would be blessed for it. So did his belief in God get him eternal life? Is he now in heaven looking down on the rest of us because he simply believed? There are many people in the world who want you to think that all you have to do is believe and you will be covered by the blood of Christ. And I'm sure they'll come up with another caveat that I haven't yet thought about yet but who these people are that try to interfere with what it really takes to get your ceiling or who the Messiah said are like dogs sleeping in the manger with the oxen. These people have no intention of getting their ceiling or surviving the tribulation nor do they want you to get your ceiling nor do they want you to survive the tribulation either. So we really have to learn to ignore those people. We're talking about 144,000 individuals out of 8 billion. That means there are only 1 out of 55,000 people that would actually receive this ceiling. 
who will actually make this calling an election sure. In other words, only 0.002% of all of humanity is willing to do what it takes in order to be counted as one of the 144,000. So, what does it take? Let me bring you over here to Luke chapter 22 and show you a commandment of the Messiah that is often ignored even more so than in Matthew chapter 5 when he says that we must fulfill the law. When you look at verse 19 of Luke chapter 22, he says, do this in remembrance of me. This is the Messiah talking and this is a commandment. He doesn't say you could do this or even that you should do this. He says, do this in remembrance of me. And what is he talking about? The communion feast that he held at what they call the Last Supper, when he took the cup of the fruit of the vine and divided it amongst the disciples and told them to drink. And he broke the bread and told them to eat, saying that that was the blood of the new covenant and the bread required for eternal life. He goes in much more detail in John chapter 6 when he's talking about this bread and this wine saying that they who partake in this communion festival on Passover will have eternal life and going as far as to say that those who don't have no life in them at all. So you say what's the connection between all of this? The 144,000 being sealed the Passover, the bread and the wine. Well, when you look in the book of 2nd Esdras, chapter 2 and verse 38, you see it's talking about the 144,000 being sealed at the Lord's feast. And when you look at Jeremiah chapter 31 in the Septuagint translation of the Bible, you see in verse 38 that the Lord's feast that he's talking about is the feast of Passover. See how he says that he will gather them from the end of the earth to the feast of Passover. It is during the feast of Passover that we receive our sealing. And because the 144,000 will be the first to understand this and will be the first to keep communion on the feast of Passover, they will go on to teach the rest of us to keep the communion feast of Passover as well. And like you see over here in the epistle of the apostles, it's necessary in order to keep the Passover every year while the rest of the world is paying attention to other stuff that they can do nothing about. It is the 144,000 that will be fulfilling the requirements necessary for eternal life, for salvation, and to get their seals. But now here we are in May of the year 2021. And many of you guys who are candidates for the 144,000 failed to keep their Passover back in April. But when you look in the book of Numbers in chapter 9, you see that there is a such thing called second Passover, which means that you actually have another chance. And that's why I'm doing this video to make you aware not only of the requirement of the communion festival on Passover but to let you know that you still have another chance in the year 2021 in order to fulfill that requirement on May the 25th after sunset is the time in which you will have the bread and wine communion festival as described in Matthew chapter 26 and Luke chapter 22 and other places in the scripture. Like the Messiah said to do this in remembrance of him. You'll do that on the evening. Like I said after sunset on May the 25th. That is second Passover in the year 2021. And after that you will continue to do Passover every year. To be sure that you will maintain your seal and be ready to perform the missions of the 144,000 when you are called to do so. Now here is my wife's recipe for unleavened bread because it's difficult to find it in the stores so you may have to make your own. So get your bread, get your wine, and get ready to have the communion feast on May the 25th. 
so that you can get your seal. If you don't, you're not going to be one of the 144,000, calling or not. Our Father's word is not to be played with, and he don't make exceptions. There will be many called, but few will be chosen for these missions. So, if you truly want to be one of the ones chosen, you better do what you have to do in order to keep the festival. Ignoring all of those guys who are not 144,000 and have no intention of surviving the tribulation in the first place. They'll be the first ones to tell you that you don't have to do it. Well, that's only true for them because they plan on being in the spirit world after the tribulation. So this sailing is not important to them at all. With that, I'm going to go ahead and close this video out. If you have any questions, please drop them down in the comment section. I'll be glad to help all I can. And may our Father bless you and keep you. May he make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May our Father lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace.